Hi, this is Dave Horan, a product line applications engineer for Viavi Test Solutions. Today I will be talking about the setup pages on the IFR 6000 test set. When setting up the IFR 6000 for testing, the operator presses the setup button while operating in any instrument. This will take you to the setup menu for the instrument you are using. I will be describing the setup items common to all of the setup pages first, and then I will address the items unique to the individual instruments. Common test setup items are items where the operator chooses the aircraft antenna to be tested, RF port, connection method, antenna range and height, and cable loss. When the operator chooses antenna for over-the-air testing, there are two important parameters. First is distance from the IFR 6000 antenna to the aircraft antenna. And second, the height difference between the IFR 6000 antenna and the aircraft antenna. These are critical to the IFR 6000 for determining ERP and sensitivity. The next method of connection, direct with coupler. Direct with coupler will allow the operator to use a coupler, for example, UC584 or TC201A, to couple the test set directly to a test article. This makes for a more consistent and reliable test. It also reduces or eliminates ATC interference when testing near congested airspace. When using the UC584, the coupler is placed over the antenna of the item to be tested. The coupler is pressed firmly to the fuselage compressing the RF gasket on the coupler. Toggle the locking lever towards the fuselage to lock the coupler onto the antenna. Make sure to remove any oil, hydraulic fluid, or fuel on the antenna or it will contaminate the gripping surfaces inside of the coupler, reducing the effectiveness of the clamping mechanism. Direct Connect is the operator connecting directly to the UUT without the antenna connected. The exception to using this method is TCAS testing will not allow a direct connection to the test set. The operator must use over-the-air testing or a coupler for performing TCAS tests. Additional common test setups are cable length, cable loss, coupler loss if using a coupler, UUT address in either auto, where the test set will determine what the uh, mode S address of the aircraft being tested is, or manual, where the operator specifies the mode S address of the aircraft to be tested. Items unique to transponder testing. Diversity testing. If you're Transponder your testing is a diversity type transponder. Place this in the on condition. If it is only a single channel, then place it in the off condition. RAD 47 is an Australian directive. It changes power frequency and MTL levels. And of course, it's only used in Australia. Power limits can be selected for FAR 43 or your 91413 parameters or it can be modified 43, which removes the upper ERP and lower MTL limits. Check capability, place this in the yes condition so that it only tests the parameters that the transponder are capable of. Two additional soft keys are diagnostics, which will allow the 6000 to be used for diagnosing problems inside of your transponder and test data, which is where the operator has the opportunity to save, recall, or print test data. ADSB additional setup. These are being used in the ADSB monitor test and the AC20-165 testing. Pressing ADSB setup in the lower left-hand corner of the soft keys takes you to the ADSB setup menu. ADSB setup consists of position decode. 
which can be either global, where the IFR 6000 uses two consecutive odd and even squitters to determine longitude and latitude of the device being tested, or local, where it actually uses only one squitter and compares that to the parameters input by the operator for longitude and latitude into the test set. Barometric pressure altitude is the test altitude that you're using on the uh, aircraft being tested. ADSB generate and monitor. You can choose either a DF-17 or a DF-18. DF-17 being transponder type ADSB compliant devices, and DF-18 is just simply a beacon. GICB ground initiated COM B. The operator determines what type of interrogation is used in order to extract the information from the UUT. For determining the longitude and latitude of your uh, test, you can use your phone or the last known aircraft position. Unfortunately, though, these aren't the most accurate methods and can induce errors into your testing. DME specific setup items consists of maximum range for your simulation and the IFR 6000 antenna gain. Unique setup parameters for DME setup are maximum range, which can be 10 to 450 nautical miles. This will set the test sets maximum range that it can simulate. Also, all of the parameters that are on the placard for the flat plate antenna must be input for antenna gain. Selecting the TCAS instrument and then pressing the setup button will take you to the TCAS setup page. The setup page for the TCAS instrument will allow the operator to turn squitters for the simulated target on or off, altitude reporting on or off, and also will allow the operator to select displayed, displayed altitude as either relative or absolute. Lastly, the test set announced address is input by the operator. Make sure that you don't use the same address as the MODES address of the TCAS that you're testing.